So guys, one of the nastiest attacks out there is request forgery in general. Whether that is cross-site request forgery or server-side request forgery, the, the, the kind of nastier one, right? And essentially, in a nutshell, I talked about those two right here if you want to know the difference. Here is min.io, a caching server slash open source slash is if s3 compatible object store it's not really a cache it says min.io is a high performance distributed object storage system it is software defined runs on industry standard hardware and all right so it's an object store and here's a bug that i was fascinated by i like uh you know if you know this channel guys i like to go through these kind of uh bugs kind of the security releases of famous uh popular software and kind of learn what can we learn what can we extract knowledge wise as back in engineer so we can get better so we can become better engineers so we can avoid other people's mistakes so here is a server side request forgery on the on a min io server was discovered and has been fixed in this release. So what was the problem here? So it's about times like we explain what is server-side request forgery. Server-side request forgery is when you make a request to a backend and your make request triggers another request sent not by you, by the server. So you trigger the server to send a request to another server based on input from you which is really bad you can as a client take advantage of that and says hey server here's a request by the way send a request to this domain this domain could be an external domain or could be an internal domain that you shouldn't have access to in both cases it's nasty right if it's an internal all of a sudden, your outside client, you have access to internal infrastructure that you shouldn't access, like an admin page that it's behind firewalls, it's behind reverse proxies that have been protected, right? There are rules that protect you against that, access controls. And the other approach is you access, you let the server make a request to another domain that is external that you have access to. But that is also dangerous because you can have this uh, have this bot of machines doing a DDoS attack on a specific server while you sitting comfortably as an attacker behind everything, right? So it's nasty. Server side request forgery is very nasty. So let's just jump. Let's just jump into how what what happened exactly here. Who is affected? All users of Min IO server version release 2019 blah 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 or newer are affected. Users that have disabled the min.io browser UI are not affected. Oh, that tells me that there is a UI that exposes certain API to do something. And if you disable that, then that API is not available. So, well, then you can't really perform this uh, server-side request forgery, right? That's interesting, man. I always said that. More features equal more security holes. Add features, you increase the security attack. Recommended action for users. All users are advised to upgrade to min.io deployment to the latest version or disable the browser, obviously, <laughs> the I.O. or upgrade. So if upgrading is hard, like it's not possible for you at this moment, you can disable the min.io browser. Description, what happened? Uh, this is what I'm interested in. An unauthenticated STS client, I think stands for Security Token Service. That's the Amazon thing. I'm not familiar with a lot with Amazon guys, by the way. Correct me if I said anything dumb. Uh, client causes the min.io server to send HTTP requests to an arbitrary domain. So you, as a client, use this STS client to send a request to min.io server in that request, you include an arbitrary domain and min.io server will send a request to that domain as a result. And I believe includes path and all that stuff, right? 
This may disclose internal infrastructure to clients, as I described in the attack uh, brief, and may be abused as an entry for further attack against other components, which is, which is a denial of server attack, right? Man, this is, this is nasty. Thanks to Python, is that his name? from our community who discovered and reported this issue to our security team. A patch has been submitted that changes STS implementation to no longer send HTTPS requests. That looks like the right solution to me. <laughs> There's no need to abstract and make things generic enough, right? Why would we allow the user to specify their own domain to connect to this STS thing, right? So they disable that functionality, apparently. They say, okay, okay. The, the STS now no longer sends HTTP requests, and instead use information that is locally available. For more information, uh, for more information, take a look at our GitHub security advisory. The patch has been reviewed and accepted. A new release has been come. All right. A successful exploit can be used, disclose, and reach internal systems that are accessible to the Minai server. And at the right time, this, this exploit has not been observed in the world. So, okay, this has not been exploited. Let's open up. Uh, well, let's read more information. Is there more information? I'd like to read. Ooh, I'd love to read more information. Love it. Minio Browser API SSRF vulnerability. So it's a feature that you enable on your Minio server, and that obviously gives you access that you can access from the browser. It's the browser API is weird. The like giving it a browser API is just, I guess, an an HTTP API, right? You should be able to access from other clients, not just browser, I think. Description, thanks to Python, Python from our community, da, 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 discovered an SSRF, server side request server Okay, let's go. Impact, let's read. There are many details here. I'd love to read them. The target application may have functionality for importing data from, ah, oh, there you go, that's it. The target application may have functionality for importing data from a URL, publishing data to a URL, or otherwise reading data from a URL. So that means the client says, hey, MinIO server, please publish information to this URL, or please read information from this URL. That feature allows MinIO to have to connect to this URL in order to do something. And the moment you give the client this flexibility to send a URL, to send a domain, you had just opened a server-side uh, request forgery bug, uh, uh, attack service. Uh, the attacker modifies the call to this function by supplying a completely different URL or manipulating how URLs are built, path traversals, etc. In server-side request forgery attack, the attacker can abuse functionality on the server to read or update internal resources, of course. Yeah, yeah, let's say slash admin, slash uh, drop something, right? And if you, usually the admin interfaces are not exposed uh, outside the firewall, right? And as a result, if you, if Min's MinIO server is behind the firewall, you just bypass the firewall. Dangerous stuff right there, guys. The attacker can supply and modify URL which the, which the code running on the server will read or submit data. And by carefully selecting the URL, the attacker may be able to read server configurations such as AWS metadata. Ouch. Connect to the internal services like HTTP and uh, HTTP enabled databases like uh, CouchDB, right? Or perform post requests towards internal services which are not intended to be exposed. Exactly what I was explaining. So guys, uh, here here's a workaround. This is the workaround we talked about. Min.io browser equal off. Just turn off that dang API. Guys, what do we learn? We learn that the more features you add. Just watch out for security. More features are great, but definitely they add, uh, they add up, uh, they ex ex increase the attack service for you. What else did we learn? We learned that letting the client have flexibility. So all the way here, you have a flexible API that gives you a beautiful user experience. Your users are happy, but you increase your, essentially, 
the attack surface because you have more features, you have more flexibility. It always increases the security. At the, all the way here, the user experience is terrible, but your API is locked in. You have almost maximum security, right? So you, have, you need to find this happy medium to play with that stuff. Guys, what do you think about these attacks? Have you seen an SSRF vulnerability in the wild? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome, goodbye.